All right, hello. Tonight or this afternoon, we're we'll looking at the binomial theorem. So you can title the next section the binomial theorem, and let me start by telling you what the binomial theorem does for you. It will allow you to quickly, in quotes, quickly take a binomial, which is two terms, in parentheses you see, here's an example, and we're going to raise them to powers rather quickly, rather quickly, with the binomial theorem. So let me show you what it looks like without the binomial theorem. So if I take a plus b, that's my binomial, and raise it to the zero, anything to the zero, oh math student, is one. So a plus b to the one is a plus b, but when you square it, some of my students, none of you, would say it's a squared plus b squared, but you can see it is not. It is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. If remember, this is a four-step process. a plus b is distributed to a plus b. And combining like terms, it will have that middle term, don't forget. When you take this answer and multiply it by the binomial a plus b again, I actually had Zach up here doing that as you were leaving the room. Did you notice? He was distributing the A, distributing the B. There were six steps, adding like terms, and this is what he got right there. So, Emma, I was going to get you to do A plus B to the fourth, but you were occupado, so we went ahead and I went ahead and did it myself. So, here's the answer to A plus B to the fourth and a plus b to the fifth, you can see that these become painful quite quickly. So the binomial theorem is going to help us. And actually the binomial theorem, I will introduce at the very end of the lesson, because I'm actually going to show you a way to do uh, the bi to um, raise a binomial to a power when the power is quite low, even quick, more quickly than the binomial theorem does. But then we'll use the binomial theorem. So, before we uh, start one, let's observe any patterns that you see the, from this mountain of expressions here. Well, the first pattern, and jot these down as well, and also have these down, so you'll probably have to take a pause point to get this down and come back to me. All right, so the patterns I observe, well, I see, I see on the first row here, when the exponent was 0, I had one term. And when the exponent was 1, I had two terms, and so on. 2 gave me three terms. So the number of terms is n plus 1, where n is the power. See, a plus b to the n, the power that we're using. So the number of terms is n plus 1. And that holds, does it hold even to the last one? Well, here's, we are raising it to the fifth. How many terms do we see here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, it works. Okay. So that's the first pattern. Another pattern I observe is when the first term appears, A, eh? uh, when the first term appears, let's look at, say, this row. It'll work on any row. Notice the first term is a and it's raised to the fourth which matches the number of the power that we're raising the whole binomial to and then it begins to descend notice four then three is the next exponent for a two one and then a zero exponent because a does not appear in that term at all so say first term I'll put a, it doesn't have to be an a, but in our example it is um, power, first terms, power descends. And the second term, you look and see, second term in this case, b, b's power. You can probably see what's going to happen here. There is no b term. And then B appeared once, twice, and so you can see the ascending power, so ascends. All right. 
the last uh, the last pattern I want to observe here is Pascal's triangle, which you've probably met somewhere in your math life. And let me review to you for you what that is. We can come up with the numbers that we call coefficients that are in front of all these terms. So I can see one, there's an unwritten one, one. So I'm going to use those three. So to memorize Pascal's triangle, we have to remember how it starts. And it's one over these two ones. So it's a little triangle of ones, and you've got the whole thing. Because look what happens. The next, term, the next line has a one, unwritten two, and an unwritten one. So I'm going to write those underneath of this. Do you see how I could have gotten these from the numbers in front or uh, above? Well, you can look at that and see in just a minute. I'll see if you can study that. One, two, one. One, three, three, one. All right. So in order to get these numbers, we're always adding the numbers above. We start with a 1. There's no number here to add. And we end with a 1. But the numbers above come from here. So you see how 1 and 2 gave me 3. 2 and 1 also gave me 3. And above it, 1 and 1 gave me 2. Let's see if that works on the next line. Here we have a 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Bam. Does. 1 and 3, 3 and 3, 3 and 1, and so forth. So without looking over there, right in the next row, you start with 1 and end with 1. You get the numbers in between by just adding consecutively the numbers above it. So did, that, did it work? 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And we don't have the answers to the next one, but we're going to use it. So let's go ahead and develop them. All right. So let's see if we can put all these patterns together and come up with a plus b to the sixth and uh, find the answer without actually multiplying it out all those many multiple steps. So to do that, it raises to the sixth. So I'm going to expect seven terms. So I'm going to put seven blanks so I can keep count easily. And I'm going to take the first term. I'll come and grab the coefficients from this in a minute. That will be my last thing. So I know in the first term, a appears to the max, a to the sixth. And from there, it descends. So I'm going to take it down, down the mountain here. And it won't appear in that term at all. a to the 0 is 1. And then the second term, b, will appear. For, it won't be in the first term. It'll appear in the second term to the lowest degree, 1. And then in this term, twice. And this term, ascending we go. And it'll appear in the last term all the way to the max, which is the power of 6 in this problem. So we'll be done. I'm putting plus signs in between. And then we'll be done. We need the coefficients out in front, which we grab from Pascal's triangle. When you look at what a row to use, I noticed this was the row that had seven entries. So I looked down Pascal's triangle, and this row has seven entries. So that will match my needs. So the first one, I'll have a 1. I'll leave it unwritten. The second one will be a 6, then 15, followed by 20, 15, and 6, and a 1, which I'll leave unwritten. So this was a quick method for obtaining a plus b to the 6th. So that works pretty well, unless we have numbers like a plus b to the 25. It would be an aggravation to do Pascal's triangle down that far. So we'll actually use the binomial theorem for those kind. So I'm going to shut this segment down and start again on part two. I hope that fit in OK.